ladies and gentlemen, to the Semi-Perfect Podcast. I'm A.C. Reyes Best, and I'm joined, as always, with the luscious, the beautiful, the deviant, Saber Spark. Oh, behave. <laughs> oh, hush. Hi, Hello. everyone. I'm back once again. It's been about a two-week hiatus, I think, but uh, bef before I just go off on the deep end, uh, I think we're forgetting one other person. Sarah, 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 Sarah. I'm hoping to hear my your microphone. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Hi. Hello. Hello. Ah, so um, what we're doing right now to start off the show is we have our audience <laughs> submit pictures on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> speaking of which, I, I just opened Twitter. And I'm looking at a picture from Nathan where it has uh, some Pringles on his laptop. And I just love the angle of the shot. It's like kind of turned to the side. Like, that's some good, uh, that's some good you know, photography right there, Nathan. I like it. Cheddar cheese Pringles. Dude, that's just the bee's knees. Nice. Um, I, I saw, we were just talking about it. Drummer Shy has his Fritos. Uh, Alec Greer is going the Popeyes route. He's He's got the... Uh, the e -e 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 chicken and a bread roll <laughs> and french fries. I, I thought you were having a stroke or something. <laughs> I was like, what was that? No, that was a Popeye impression. <laughs> hey, <what> I, um... <laughs> <laughs> so, I used, to call, I used to call Popeye Pie Pie. Pie Pie? And, and it wasn't until Tommy started laughing at me one day. He's like, Pie Pie? Pie Pie? I'm like, yeah. What? Pie Pie. <laughs> It's Pi Pi. Pi. It's Pi Pi. It's Pee Pee. Uh, Pi -pi. And then uh, Bobby won. He's going the simple route of cereal and some Pepsi. Oh, you scared me. I thought he was pouring the Pepsi into the cereal. Man, he's got some <laughs> pony plushies. Bobby, if you win the pony giveaway, I'm going to feel kind of guilty giving you more stuff. <laughs> like, <laughs> nah. By the way, we're doing the pony giveaway this episode. Um, I'm trying to find some rhythm to this madness because I'm just awful. And the last time we announced the winners, they never got back to me. So I might do a do-over for that round. Uh, did you private message them? I did. I did. Okay. And they just never got back to me. One of the guys well, who did it never... I know, one the... I know one of them because he commissioned me. I might see if I can message him on DeviantArt or something. Do it. Do it. Do so, it. Because I, I yeah. wanted to give away a plush next week. Mm -hmm. And for this week, I have, like, see, what I'm giving away initially is kind of rinky-dink, but it's fun. They're the old McDonald's MLP toys I got back in 2011. And, I, hey, you got to give props. Like, those things are vintage. Like, that was back when ponies were so new. And it was, like, the, like in the story that goes with it where I go into McDonald's awkwardly asking for, like, yes, I need a Happy Meal. Yes, I am 25. <laughs> yes, I need the girls' toys. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I I want a Happy Meal toy, girl, and no questions. <laughs> Obi Wan Kenobi style. <laughs> I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> um, so on this show, uh, we got a couple things for you, the viewers. Uh, one of which is going to be we're going to be releasing a video tomorrow on YouTube, and you folks are going to be seeing it first here tonight. And uh, what it is is it was made to be a, and, and we'll get into this uh, later in the show when we show it, but it was, it was made to be a promo for Pacific PonyCon. And I'm going to let the video speak for itself. I don't know how well it's going to convey what's actually going on as far as information goes, <laughs> but you'll see why I had a little bit of trouble actually getting this one out. And usually I'm, I'm good in these type of situations, but yeah, to, to keep the vagueness going, you'll see. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look forward to seeing it. Yeah. We got another one here. Daniel just posted his sour cream and onion lays. See, I'm trying to go through a carb depletion right now, which sucks, and it's like... You chose the right time of the year. No, I know. It sucks. <laughs> I know. I actually might take a break during Christmas, which probably ruins the process, but, like, 
I don't know. I, I was doing, I was reading on some articles and some like personal stories of people who like lost lots of weight. Cause right now I'm kind of hitting this brick wall where I'm, I I'm gaining muscle and I'm not really losing too much fat right now. Yeah. And my fault is that I keep eating too much carbs and uh, I eat a little bit late at night. So now it's like, okay, no more carbs, no more eating at nighttime. And I can probably start to get some real results. And it sucks. Cause like I can already tell I'm getting grumpy because of it. <laughs> <laughs> like I had, a, I had a, oh, did the podcast go offline? Oh, we're good. We're good. Never mind. I'm sorry. Yeah, don't, don't scare me like that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Uh, so, ha! Huh. This is the first episode for the hiatus. Yes, it's our first episode for the hiatus. Uh, and guys, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of work around Saber. You and I talked a little bit about uh, maybe some things we're gonna try and uh, do throughout uh, these episodes during the hiatus. Um, some things kind of in the works and, and once, once we narrow it down on, on some of the stuff we'll add, I'm sure we'll make some announcements. I'm trying to think, like we had some ideas as far as what we can talk about <laughs> and uh, adding on to yours, like one thing, I, what? The silence just had me so worried there. You, just the way you were no, like, no, 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 no. I, I was looking at the stream. It keeps going on and off. So I was like, is this thing working or not? But <laughs> But uh, I guess the chat's not complaining, so it is working. Yeah, it no, I was going to say is one thing I, I, I kind of touched on this a few episodes ago is that I want to, like, talk to the chat about, like, here's our topic of discussion for this week. You know, is is yada yada blank blank. Like, it can be pony related. It can be uh, animation related. And in a way, and not to sound like I'm using you all, but it's kind of a a bit of a practice round for my videos I'm going to make on YouTube. Like, Woo! the question I have for this week is uh, an, an idea for a video I want to do, and I want to share it with you all. So, all right. So, man, no episode. Jeez, this is kind of different. Uh, <laughs> what, what Do we just go into the discussion yep. or what? You want to you wanna jump into the discussion? Cause, well, actually, you know what? How about right before we get to this discussion, do you want to talk a little bit about the last two weeks? What's been... Like, what's anything yeah. new? Anything exciting? Because we haven't aired in two weeks in a row, right? I think it's been one. I think we skipped one, one week. I think it was one, yeah. It was different. <laughs> but Sorry, I'm going through my Twitter to find that post with the, like, pony giveaway. Mm -hmm. And I just came across your vine with you doing, like, the turkey head thing in Walmart. <laughs> yes. Props to you for having a straight face. Like, I admire that about you. Yeah, as opposed to what you're gonna see in a in a couple of minutes when we air this video. <laughs> Good. Uh -oh. So, uh, all right. Well, last two weeks I've had some family things going on, hence why uh, there's been some inconsistencies with the stream. I won't get into details because it's you know, I guess personal, but uh, just I don't know. Just that, that's why things have been kind of on and off for myself. Besides that, Christmas is around the corner. Looking forward to that. And, of course, Star Wars, which is just going to be just amazing. Well, God, I hope it's amazing. Jesus, please let it be good. <laughs> please let it be good. How about you all? What's been going on with you guys? Uh, finals. Hooray. But uh, I had an advising appointment today, and apparently my estimated time of graduation is after fall 2016. What? Yay. That's awesome. Yeah, fall yeah, in the fall 2016, it's going to be my last semester. Dang, you're almost there then. Yes. Excited? Awesome. So is that, yes. is that, are you on track right now or where, yeah, where does that track. put you? Um, I'm on track right now. Uh, I might sign up for another class this semester. So then it, because in order for me to graduate, I need like 21 more units. So. So I have nine units lined up this semester, which I might sign up for some more so I can take off some from the next semester. So, yeah, I'm on track. I'm getting there. Getting there. It's going to be weird not being in school anymore. <laughs> I feel like I've been in it for a really long time. Yeah, well, yeah. it's weird because in a way, well, not in a way, but... It's like a chapter ending in life. You're like, well, done with that. What's next? Yeah. It's, it's almost like, in a way, it's like you're officially an adult then. Yeah. You know, we, we were actually talking a little bit about this uh, amongst our, you know, a group of us talking the other night. Um, and it's, it's interesting because 
while you're going through school, at least for me, there were always like, you know, you had your set goals. Like, okay, you had to, you had to get this done. Okay, you, you got through elementary school. Now you have to do middle school, then high school. Now you have to get to the college. Okay, now you have to accomplish certain things in college. You have to complete this before college is done. You have to do this to graduate. You graduate, and suddenly, like, yeah, you, you still have goals where it's like you got to get a job. You, yeah. you got to set certain things up. But for me, it, it's kind of nice because it feels like you're you go from this river where it's leading yeah. you to all of a sudden this vast ocean of just <laughs> whatever the hell you want to do. Yeah. And that's that's what I like. It's like there there is so much more freedom when it comes. Obviously, financially, it sometimes needs to back this up, but it just you have I feel like such an open amount of freedom to pursue what you want to do. Not that you didn't have that option going through college and whatnot, but you know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. I don't know, it, it feels less, it feels less And then less it kind of structured. starts all over again when, when you retire. Uh, one of my, uh, my middle school music director, he retired like two years ago. And I just remember watching his Facebook and like, he's just like, taking pictures of flowers and roses and sunsets and I'm just like oh my goodness and he's like posting about how he's just got all this time and I'm just like oh <laughs> he's like I don't know what to do with all my time that I have <laughs> oh, uh, I want to also uh, give a shout out right now Christopher Hope on Twitter CH just posted chicken noodle soup as he enjoys the podcast he says you don't have to be sick to enjoy soup, it's better with a podcast. Dude, I like his TV mount. It's pretty cool. <laughs> that, that sounds like a commercial. It's better <laughs> with a podcast. Where is it supposed to? I don't see it. Well, yeah, I just amiibos. retweeted Amiibos. Amiibos everywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, no, that's, that's the thing. Because a lot of people ask, and I know it's kind of a common question when you're still going through college, you start looking forward, and it's like, God, is it, like... It, it, it's almost a setup, it feels like, to seem scary. Well, you know, it's like once you're yeah. done with the structure of school, it's like, oh, my God, what do, what do I do? Mm -hmm. But but I don't know. I just – I like I said, I the, – the biggest thing that changes is that you still have to be somewhere at a certain time. But, dear God, the greatest part is they pay you to be there. Oh. <laughs> so nice. It's – yeah. I mean, like you said, it's like it's like – chapters in life and how like elementary middle school high school college and then you're technically you know there you are you're an adult now yeah. it's your choice to decide on what you want to do and that's something that i've had issues with where i'm 27 years old and i still am not entirely sure what i'm doing and that's okay you know it, it's all about finding your place yeah. and and like it's all about the journey, Frodo. The, <laughs> the older you get, the more real it gets. Like, the more you kind of realize, like, wow, this is life. Like, it's it's getting very, like, you gotta, you gotta make things happen now. And it's, now is the time to to figure out what to do. Like, that's, making that's it sound scary again. No, 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 I'm just saying, like, that's what college, uh. like, that's what college fills you up with. Like, that's why, because it, it is scary. Like, there is, a, there is a sense of, of, of urgency but at the same yeah. time, it's not as urgent as you might think. Like I, the thing, yeah, yeah. That's why the age of thirty is terrifying. <laughs> that's when things are like, wait, so oh, shit. <laughs> no, I got to figure like this Before out. you hit that, that, yeah, no, I. Uh, the thing that drove me crazy though was school, and, and I'm not saying like it shouldn't be part of school. It's just like the whole exams and and you know you put a lot of effort into something and not knowing if you're gonna pass. <laughs> and now I'm probably just adding it into everyone that's going through finals right now. Like, thanks, asshole. But <laughs> it's I don't know. It's just there, where you lose that structure of school. Depending on where you end up, like the job I I work at now, it it feels like the structure is a lot more simple. Another thing that I was like really excited about getting out of was homework. I'm like I want to I want to go spend eight hours doing a job and then go home and not have to worry about keep doing that job. You know? Yeah, and that's nice. Like, it's it's nice to be able to say once you walk out that door at 5 o'clock, you can leave those issues and problems there until 8 in the morning next day. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, that's that's something that I've. I mean, granted, some jobs aren't like that. Some jobs are kind of twenty four seven, and uh, that's why I decided to be a paper boy. So. Well, that, <laughs> oh, I heard that the benefits for that job are amazing. They are retirement is great, and they got a four hundred one k program. You just can't beat. Like I don't know. Uh, it, it's uh, like there's an issue with education in general. And and I have a I have a story. Yeah, your story is like the understatement of the year. Where I'm just so it's just amazing to me. Like just this whole conversation is turned into. Yeah, well, where to start off? Saying, with, hey, I'm gonna graduate. Sarah. Look what you've done, Sarah. <laughs> and now we're just like yeah. now we that we're on the subject. We made it out of the trenches. <laughs> no, but but like so, I was working at. Uh, my job a few days ago or about a week ago last week has happened and it's finals week so i see a lot of worried college students come to our shop and, and our shop is more of a sit-down shop there's no drive through so i guess you have to walk in after all and you'll see people studying doing their homework taking exams and i was working in the bar and this girl walked up to me near the counter and said sir have any of you, you know, have you or any of your coworkers read Hamlet? To which my immediate response was, have you seen Lion King? Because <laughs> that's what Lion King is based yeah. on, is Hamlet. And, and she just gave me a dumb look like, wait, what? I'm like, have you seen Lion King? And she's like, yes. I said, it's Lion King. Like, that's the heart <laughs> of the story is Lion King. And then I, because, like, I... <laughs> you know what I wonder if she thought? Is that when you loosely said based. <laughs> loosely <laughs> based? Loosely based, yeah. So, where in Hamlet was there's there a baboon in the talking clouds? <laughs> no, I could I could totally see. Like, she just fails like, the test. Her the way you said, "Have you seen Lion King?" If she took it as like when someone says, "Does a bear shit in the woods?" Oh. Where if you had said that, I could see you being like, "It's that. It's literally a bear shitting in the woods. That is Hamlet." That's Hamlet. No, absolutely. Hamlet ha is a bear shitting. Have you seen Attack of the Clones? It's that. All right. It's basically <laughs> that. No, because like, as far as the different paths in life, I would like to, I guess you know, consider one of those paths is to become a teacher, and my old teacher from college is what you know. She was the one who inspired me with that thought. Like, I, I love learning, and I love seeing people have a passion for learning, and. To see this girl who is just like literally like I don't care about reading it. Uh, I just want to pass my test, my exam. That's a problem in education, and I think Neil deGrasse Tyson talked about this too, where he said like it's not about having a a desire to learn and to gain knowledge, but more of a fear of I've got to pass this test. So everything they're learning is very temporary. And once they've passed their exam, they kind of forget it immediately. Like, it's very little of it is actually retained unless it's something to do with their career path where they need to use it again. And that's a problem. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It, it, it kind of goes, though, to the consideration of what is she going to school for, for me. Like, you know, some people, you ha there's certain classes you have to take. And like for me, like I was, I actually enjoyed English. I enjoyed writing. Yeah. Uh, it's partially why that's one of my part-time jobs is doing press releases for racing teams. And you know, so that that ended. But like chemistry and that kind of stuff, that was my. I need to just get through this. Like I didn't enjoy it. It it wasn't. It was interesting, but it wasn't interesting chemistry enough. Sucks. I oh god like and this is like I mean engineering. I never took chemistry, which is insane. Like I what? How I did know, you get uh, environmental science? Ew! I don't even know mm -hmm. how that counted. Like, it, oh, are you kidding me? Environmental science is environmental science. <laughs> I'm about to be the biggest hypocrite. Yeah, chemistry. I don't want to learn that. No, <laughs> um, <laughs> I uh, no uh, environmental science is pretty easy, and because there are classes where. You just go in there and you uh, – it's, it's a different kind of learning where history doesn't require a formula. It requires a good listener and anyone can be a good listener if they truly care about what they're, you know, the teacher's talking about. Even then, like it, you just sit there and just kind of soak in the knowledge and, and if you don't want to remember it, then fine. Spit it out when you're done. 
<laughs> just like that one video I made now. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but chemistry, porno, mathematics, made. yeah. <laughs> Next update video. No, <laughs> mathematics, chemistry, uh, that is built upon previous classes and knowledge where, like, that's why math was, un uh, uh, like, initially hard for me. So, uh, where were we just going like with me. this? <laughs> I have no idea where we're going. Someone post food so we can get distracted. Yeah, grats to you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. So about why the school system. This is the school system. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, someone's getting in here for the first time. Oh, semi-perfect podcast. They talk about ponies. I can't wait for this light-hearted conversation about cartoons. And that's why I believe that in order to change the cultural climate in the Middle East, we have to <laughs> have so, Muslims. Uh, go ahead. You, well, I was just going to say the best part about all this is that we're 24 minutes into the show. And I haven't yet talked about what I've done in the last two weeks. You've been busy. And I have a question for you because I know yeah. that you mentioned that you went to Disneyland, god damn you, uh, last Sunday. And You're so busy. Without me. With, without your, your woman. Well, to be fair, she didn't join me. It wasn't I me leaving that. Was, <laughs> well, the, the, Some what? bitch at the deli didn't work her last shift. That sucks. Yeah. Well, that yeah. wouldn't have made a difference, though, because you just had to go in earlier, right? Uh, well, I, I pretty much got out at the same time, yeah. But still. <laughs> I, yeah. Shut so, up. yeah. So, so what was your question, Saber? Well, you went there, because Tommy is your best friend. Like, you guys go all the way back to your birth, which is amazing. And you went to Disneyland for the first time ever with him past, this past Sunday. How was that? Okay, so yeah, what happened was they found out they have um, some, I think a cousin or somehow related, a nephew, something. Um, and the person's in the college program, and I guess they got some free tickets. And because they live pretty far away from Disneyland, not they don't have a lot of people who are like, oh yeah, we'll go. And they brought it up to them at a Christmas party they went to. And they said, here's an opportunity, you know, if you guys want to go, here's two tickets. So so Tommy and his girlfriend Shayla went out to Disneyland um, without me the, a couple weeks ago. And, and they went and they were texting me all day like, okay, so so what's the right thing to do here, do here? <laughs> and they wish that so, one of us was with them because they know that, like, you know, we can help point things out that they would otherwise walk by and not realize. Um <laughs> and then so so then they uh, they had the opportunity to go one more time to California Adventures, and that's the uh, for anyone that doesn't know that's the like it, it, I don't want to say secondary park in the Disneyland the park Resort. The way. Yeah, it, it's the <laughs> more the carnival esque. Right. Yeah, and, and it's so yeah, it was my opportunity to for the first time ever go to the Disneyland Resort with Tommy. And it was it was uh, it was fun. It was a great time. Uh, we had lunch, then then went on in. Um, they got there at like eight in the morning and gotten everything. I hadn't gotten there yet because I had to put something out that day <laughs> called Bronies React. <laughs> oh, you mean another one? Yeah, it's, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, the uh, the Bernie's Rack video went out that same day that I went to Disneyland, so it was kind of nice because it was a it was a a break from you know editing, getting out of the house, just just being able to spend some time with friends, and yeah, I mean this guys, I'll tell you just to segue a little bit, this Bernie's Rack was one of the longer ones as far as editing goes. I don't know why I just. Like it, it didn't feel like it was moving any slower. It just was. <laughs> it took, it took like a solid week's worth of just straight up editing to get this thing out. So it was. Uh, you ready yeah. for but round yeah, the, three? With <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, the, this is like uh, subsqueak, subsque whatever. You've <laughs> I must have subsequently, and I'm like, is that a new <laughs> album in the Chipmunk sequel? <laughs> subsequently, <laughs> some Hollywood executives like, oh my god, he figured it out. Write that down. <laughs> subsequently, the subsequent sequel. Um, 
No, uh, this as far as the reacts go, it was like back to back to back. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's uh, what happened was what really jumbled things up was that Cutie Mark episode that came out for the fifth anniversary. Yeah, and that was a little bit of a lack of insight on my part because I just didn't realize the fifth anniversary was coming up, and. You know, uh, coupled with that, I didn't realize, oh, there's going to be a special episode for the fifth anniversary of the show. So it came out, and I just started getting bombarded by all these people saying, you have to react to this episode. Oh, my God, fifth anniversary, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, huh, okay, (laughs) let's see what this is all about. And you get a lot of requests, so. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, a lot of, we, there's a lot of requests that come in for the reacts on just, each week we'll get it, you know, you got to react to that episode. You got to react to that episode. Do not react to that episode, please. And we uh, typically don't do, you know, regular episodes throughout the year. But this one, this one, the just a flood of people requesting. So when I, I got my first opportunity, I, I filmed myself watching it. I didn't see it for a few days until after it aired. Uh, I surprisingly missed spoilers for it despite all the requests but yeah it uh it was it came out while i was already working on this equestria girls react so i wasn't editing it yet we were still compiling everything but i i pushed back the equestria girls react to fit the cutie mark react in to get that one you know out i felt that one was more timely than the equestria girls one um and so, yeah, so so then I knew I, – I didn't even actually realize until I was midway through the cutie mark editing that I was like, oh, crap, the season finale is coming too. <laughs> so, yeah, just a lot of a lot of time going into these reacts, uh, pretty much putting three out in a closer time span than I've ever put three Bronies reacts out. Well, so, yeah. <laughs> at least you finally get a hiatus ahead of you. We can slow down. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I wanted to point out that Shifro put together a really cool Minecraft uh, animation I, for us. I was just peeking at this, and I am in love with this thing. Shifro, did you see the picture Minecraft? that you made too? Yes, I did. It's actually in the little uh, screen at the very beginning of this Minecraft animation. Uh, do you want to show it right now? Are we going to show it on the uh, stream? Yeah, I'll uh, I'll show it on the stream. Yes, yes so I'm gonna please, link it because... To you all. I like Minecraft. And I'm going to <laughs> capture. All right. So there's the link here. Oh, look at that. He wasn't kidding. <laughs> the poster of you <laughs> is, a, is a giant in the background. <laughs> he also put out another uh, a picture just now of like a bunch of people sitting around a table. Yeah, it's on my screen too. Like it, it, that's next to my computer, uh, where I have my elbow down right over here. All right, so uh, let's watch it. How about that? <laughs> let's do this. All right, three, two, one, go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Semi Perfect Podcast. I am Sarah Spark, and joining me is AC Race Best. I'm laying down. Oh, Sarah, I can see Booth <laughs> PP. Oh, again? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Children. What are these cutouts for? Wow. <laughs> yeah, what cheese do you like? Because you see you like cheese. I, I'm i not a big fan of the crazy, strong, it'll kill you. Oh, like, shut up. Um, you probably know like three cheeses and that's it. That, you, <laughs> I love cheese. I like pepper jack, American, and Swiss. <laughs> I have one last question that popped up here, and I have no idea what he's talking about. This is amazing. He says, how do you feel about mood ring eye contacts? Are these a thing? Is that me in the mer- <laughs> window? <Yeah. laughs> Thank you all for joining us for semi Pepper Podcast, and we'll be seeing you guys next time. Have a good night. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Hi guys, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it just a tiny bit, why not hit that like this button? This is freaking cool. Also, don't forget to check out these guys' the channels. Oh, he's an AC Race Fest. They're really awesome people, and I Aww. bet that they'll love a new subscriber. What? Anyway, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you just guys the credits. later. Yeah. That's cool. And he's also using that, uh, that, um, Unicorn Kid song. That's really cool. Dude, Aww. Nito, you're awesome. Thank you, Shifro. God. Gain yourself a subscriber.
Oh, I love that. That is so awesome. I, uh, I'm flattered. Absolutely. Thank you. Really am. Yeah, thank you, Shai Fro, for everything. Uh, this video was awesome, but you also put some really funny pictures that, that we talk about. It's just great. That was awesome. That was really, that was really, really cool. All right. So um, it is 933. I think that's good for an episode. We'll see you guys next. No, I'm joking. All right. <laughs> so, so I would like to bring up the topic of discussion if you guys okay. are ready for that. All right. All right. Chat. Tweet to me your responses or even type it into the chat. I'm, I'm curious to see what y'all think. So the next video I want to do for my channel is what I want to do is uh, is Pixar dying? That's the that's the question. <sighs> and the reason why I'm asking that is the Good Dinosaur did relatively bad in the box office. I mean, it's it's Paleo told me it has a chance of bouncing back during Star Wars because there's uh and this happened before apparently for a Disney movie where initially it didn't do so well, but because of big movie releases like Star Wars. Folks might have like it's like or sold out, so folks will well, we'll go see the Good Dinosaur instead, or oh, the, oh that Star Wars is a older kid movie, an older person movie. Let's go see the Good Dinosaur instead. Mm -hmm. So that effect has happened before. It could happen again for the Good Dinosaur, but uh, you know, putting that aside, just looking at the trend of Pixar in the last couple of years, it makes me wonder, and other folks have pondered. Is the studio doing worse? So, what do you all think? It is. It no. Is. no? <laughs> dead. Dead. That's dead. my answer. No. All right. Good, good, good talk. <laughs> good thank talk. you for your input, Sarah. No, that'll make a good video. No. <laughs> um, huh. As far as uh, I don't really think Pixar is in trouble. Um, one thing I think that a lot of people have kind of forgotten, I guess, is that. It's not typical for Pixar to release two movies in the same year. Yes, and that was uh, different. That was definitely new for them. Yeah, because, I mean, Inside Out, you know, came out, and mm -hmm. I, I didn't hear a lot of people too worried about it when that came out. Uh, Good Dinosaur, I have, I've been reading up on it, uh, seeing what a lot of people have been saying, and there are a lot of people that are speculating that this might be their biggest, I guess, flop uh, of any movie. And and those same people were defending Cars too, so I'm like, ah, my people. But uh... <laughs> but Cars too, like, and, and I'm and I'm not trying to like jump on the bandwagon and make you feel bad. Because so I know you like the car. Like, okay, I will tell you this. Car Hit me with it, Saber. I'd like to know what's on your mind. No, Cars one. I thought yeah. that was a good movie. Not fantastic. But it's a, it's a good movie. That's more credit than you've ever given it before. It's different. It's there are po there are parts where I'm like, oh, this is kind of weird. Like, I, but overall, it's like you start thinking too much. You're like, <laughs> how do they uh, reproduce oops. their cars? No, I mean, yeah, I, I guess I will suspend my disbelief. But like one thing that I because uh, the good dinosaur, like what I think it's it suffered from is like I get the characters had their own style, but I feel like like because now I had some time to think about it. I feel like it doesn't mesh with the background. Like, the background for The Good Dinosaur was insanely beautiful. Like, the best I've ever seen, ever animated, period. But the characters have this weird contrast where you've got these... It's on purpose. Yeah, but even if it's on purpose, does it work? Like, I didn't really care for it. Like, I like the character designs. I think it's almost like... World of Warcraft has really cartoony characters in a cartoony universe with it, and that works. But like, it's like putting, I don't know, a Call of Duty character in the World of Warcraft universe, or vice versa, where the characters don't mesh up with the background. That's just my take on it. That's what I think, and I want to hear what you all think. So you, you okay. think otherwise, right? Okay, my personal view on the design of the movie is, a, like. It's obviously on purpose that Pixar did these hyper-realistic backgrounds with these uh, very eccentric-looking uh, characters, like very stylized. But the way they meshed it together, I, I feel like it works, because even though the characters themselves look really goofy, if they have 
so much detail. Like you can see like every single little scale on Arlo and you can see like his, like his eyes are so nice. Oh my God. Like the details on everything, yeah. including the characters are so gorgeous. And like, I feel like it, 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 uh, it overrides the goofiness of the, like the character designs. And I feel like it's, it's a very interesting juxtaposition that they made between the characters and the backgrounds. And I, I feel it works. I feel like it works. I enjoyed it. Like we're, it's we're hitting words pure eye either. candy. Oh, I agree. And, and you're right about the, the characters where mm. there was a scene where it showed water dripping down like Arlo's uh, scales. Mm -hmm. And I thought that looks amazing. Like just yeah. the, de the the attention to detail. Like, I've been watching this this video series called from from it's like Rocket Jump School or something like that on YouTube, where these guys are professional editors and they do these lessons talking about like different editing techniques and and just knowledge. And they're talking about the advancement of CGI, where folks will be like, "Oh, CGI looks awful still," and they're saying like. Take Transformers, for example. Like, yeah, the main part of the camera that it's focusing on, like the robots, yeah, obviously CGI. But mm -hmm. what they said is, like, there's been huge jumps as far as um, blending in the background with practical effects. Like, uh, I think Mad Max is an amazing example of this, where... Like, you have the practical effects, but then you kind of just add a little bit of special effects here and there. And then when it comes together, it looks insanely beautiful. Like, mm -hmm. like good. Really, really good. Yeah. I feel like The Good Dinosaur was very much an experimental film for Pixar. Like, them just kind of seeing what they can do. Uh, like, technically. You know what's interesting to me is one of the biggest gripes I've heard about this movie is the name of the movie. <laughs> the good, no joke. The good yeah. dinosaur. Well, People how, have been how saying so? because I don't know. I guess I guess it's just kind of a weak title. They're like the the way that people compared it was they're like, well, you could have literally taken any of your movies that that Pixar's made, and you could call it the good this, the good that, the good robot, Wally. The good fish, Nemo. The good, the you know, it's like well, it's, and and there's this. What made him uh, the good dinosaur type well, of thing? He, it, it's, he didn't kill the human, which and, and by the way, like <laughs> I, 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 he didn't murder someone. Therefore, it's pretty good. 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 Well, no, but the thing is that the uh, the movie went through like production hell, and I know that uh, the original story was changed a lot. So, like, I would like to know what the original plot was, because that might have more meaning with the title of the movie. Like, somebody thought, like, what if there was, uh, what, if, what if the story was the dinosaurs and the humans, like, being rivals, where, like, you have intelligent dinosaurs, and now humans are catching up, and now they have to get along or something, or fight, or whatever, I don't know. Like, well, Paleo in the chat just said that uh, Peter's son said, I hope that's how you say that guy's name, Son, so -so, so -so, said the title was deceptively simple and has more meaning than at first sight, which I'm not saying I have an issue with the title. Um, it's, it's that I've heard people gripe about it, but I think it, that ties in with maybe the marketing for this movie. Um, like you compare the two movies that came out this year where you had Inside Out and their marketing, like people were like, oh my God, we have to see that. Where I feel like the good dinosaurs marketing was underwhelming. And I don't know, maybe maybe people are just like, well, we, we already had our Pixar fix for the year. So and, and this is different in the sense that they like last year, no movie. This year, two movies. That's never happened before. And and Inside Out was a big hit. And I think Paleo said that they put, like, that's the most money they ever put into advertising for an animated movie. While mm -hmm. The Good Dinosaur is more like, yeah, it's our fall, winter release, whatever. You know, we'll, we'll advertise here and there. Uh, just it, it wasn't a heavy hitter like Inside Out. Inside Out had big celebrity voice actors, and those folks can endorse it. It's the first Pixar movie in over a year. It's a very unique because this year they had two new IPs. That's really that's really uh, ambitious of them to, mm -hmm. to do that. 
Yeah. And it's also kind of like two uh, two new ideas for movies, and now it's going to be four or three years in a row of sequels. You know, yeah. it's it's interesting when it comes to... I think there's going to be that one uh, uh, Day of the Dead movie in 2017, I think. Oh, are they still making that? Yeah, I, think I so. thought they scrapped it because they felt like it was. Uh, I guess it's um, been a, because of the. Let me look right now. Let me look. What was that movie we watched <laughs> at your house, guys? It was the. Um, uh, the, the, the Good Book Dead Man. Life. So good. Oh, wait, what was it Book called? Of Book of Book of Book of that, so that is a good movie. I thought it was beautiful. I thought it had a good comedy. I mean, the pop songs in it were kind of eh, but that's, that's my only gripe. Like, everything else was a very. That was a fun movie. <laughs> you know what movie I watched? So on the wiki that it's called Coco. It's still being produced. And I think actually at D twenty three, this past coming D twenty three, they, they did show a poster. Paleo says it's back on, so Yeah. I guess I guess they are back to Yeah. Well <clears throat> it's it's interesting because like the one thing that a lot of people are saying about the good dinosaur when it comes to Pixar and the health of that company and maybe needing some work and whatnot is that back in the day when Pixar was first coming out with movies and you know they they put out who knows how many that I think every time they put out a movie it was you know number one um, of you know it would top the charts uh, for for that week it would it take over probably for that month um, and so people are comparing how this movie's done, and it's like, oh, are they in trouble? Is this or that? And I, I think it's it's interesting because, at, like you know, Saber, as content creators, you don't always strike gold. You, you could have a team of people work on something and think, this is a great idea. But sometimes it's just it doesn't get received like you expect it to. And, you know, for the track record that Pixar's had, I think we're allowed to give them one or two. I didn't even see this as necessarily a flop. Just, you know, as, okay, so it wasn't ground moving. Well, it, it that's, that's take the earth. Here, here's, and this is like the Pixar curse where, and this is my theory, which I'm sure many people also like, he's like, well, duh. You have an A student, okay? A plus, A plus, A, you know, A plus, A plus, just awesome grades. And then they make a C or a B. And all the parents are like, ah, oh, this is a shame. Like, we expected better from you. Compared to a student who makes Cs, you know, a C, a C, a C. Ooh, a B plus or even an A minus. That's freaking awesome. Good job. That's Pixar <laughs> for you. Where they have raised the bar so high that whenever they make a subpar movie, which would have been amazing from any other studio uh, everybody else is like you could have done better you could have done better <laughs> like if brave was made by dreamworks people are like applauding it I mean, even though i still think it's kind of a boring movie so um, so you're saying pixar has the asian parent syndrome that's exactly what it is <laughs> that's exactly you what it is plus? you got be plus you got to be doctor so i'm glad we can be racist during our yeah, no i, I had, had a racist I saw a video today. on youtube i saw a video on youtube Get this. I had a racist moment today, but against white people. Okay? So you were the racist? I was a racist towards white people, let me tell you. <laughs> and it was an accident. Where uh, there are these two girls, look to be about in their mid-20s, just your typical, like, just run-of-the-mill, just, they're females. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Run-of-the-mill. I, I don't know how to describe, know how to describe them. Describe like, them. I, I guess just like your typical, like, I go to the mall, I shop, you know, I just, just, Typical There's chick. just something missing. I, I can't put my finger on it because I'll go to jail. But <laughs> no, but they uh just like not, not your dumb blondes or anything. Just just typical girl. I'm getting way into this. So, uh, they ordered uh, a sandwich and we had to warm it up. So they walked to the counter where they wait for their food, and the oven's on the other side of the store. So I was cooking the sandwich. I took it out and I walked to my register. And I thought the girls were sitting down near the register, near a table. I'm like, girls, uh, your sandwich is ready. Right, right over here? And they're just kind of staring at me like, what are you talking about? I'm like, this is the sandwich you ordered. This is for you. And the other two girls are like, do you mean for us? 
And I looked over to them. I'm like, oh my god, you all look the exact same. And then I'm like, ha! I was racist towards white people. You all look the same. You were racist towards white people? Well, I oh. thought the girls were the exact same. I mean, I, obviously it's not racism. It's just coincidence. But still, I so thought... So what are you trying to say about... White people. Other. <laughs> white people. <laughs> How dare you? They're racist. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, it's not like... I'm just blowing out of proportion. But I thought that was funny because I was... Cause, I thought, well, they looked the exact same in the sense of how they dressed, how they, their height, you... color, everything. <laughs> you made a really good uh, joke at uh, that was on a Who's line. Um, it was uh, Crystal was talking to her changeling army or whatever. Yeah. And you're like, I don't want to sound racist, but you all look the same. And I thought that was just brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. So yeah, no, that is. I'll that get is... angry if I make a smart joke and no one laughs. I almost want to say, I'm. It's too good for you, <laughs> to the audience. You have. You've literally done that. I have. Yeah, you turned to the audience and you said, "It's a smart joke." I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at Bloody Con of all places too. Wow, there is a a scene in, in Who's Line where like, uh, it was scenes from a hat, and the question or the, the, the it was like, redneck Shakespeare, and they're doing things like you know, let down your hair and things like that. But then Wayne Brady walked up, and he's like, "Lo, the horse approacheth," and nobody got it. He's like, "Read a book, people." <laughs> 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 which just killed like Drew Carey because it's because the idea of like it was too smart of a joke because nobody got the reference because it's it's Shakespearean stuff that they've never read or heard of. <laughs> I loved it. Fantastic. Oh god. But back so, on uh, topic then. So I I, yeah. I I suppose like once again Asian parent syndrome or tiger mom syndrome or whatever. So what do you what do you all think about? The sequels, do you feel like that's a way of them saying, like, we give up on the new ideas for now, or they're just cashing in? What, what do y'all think? Um, I think part of it's cashing in. I mean, probably. I don't think you can deny that some of these movies, as successful as they were, like Finding Nemo, now is Finding Dory. Uh, but where I, I mean, I always, when I consider a movie cashing in is when you take a movie that was just really good. And then no effort, no money is put back into the sequel. Cars two. And it's little. Yeah. What's that? Cars two. <laughs> That's the only bad Pixar film, in my opinion. Like, once again, I can appreciate like the the visuals and the work that goes into it, but the story really is just insane. Where it's like, what this... about the story bothered you, Saber? Let's have a chat. I'm putting on you, my because you take let's a talk glasses. Yeah, because you take a side character. And you just th throw them into a world that doesn't make any sense with a plot that doesn't make any sense. And it's what just... didn't make sense about the plot? Perhaps it was okay, first, above. No, no, no. You. It's not. It could have been. What, what bothered me is like, I'm already having trouble suspending my disbelief in a world of cars that have no people. But <laughs> now they're secret ah. agents. That doesn't make sense. Like Lack of imagination. It's, uh, yeah, that, those it's are a my... plague throughout the country. <laughs> I do definitely think that Cars 2 was kind of a cash-in. Because Cars shut was up. very... You shut up. That's the no. biggest Cars uh, cash. Very successful, and the merchandise for that movie was extremely successful because, like, kids, you know, they love Cars. It's kind of funny to me, actually, like, how marketable that movie became. Because, like, I don't know. There's just something that surprised me how, of all the merchandise you see... I'm pretty sure there's still more Cars merchandise than there is Frozen merchandise, which is saying something. <laughs> like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not complaining. It's just... no. I, I'm not I saying mean, that Cars 2 was, like, a terrible movie. Like, it's it's still enjoyable. It's not, like, Pixar. It's not, it's not groundbreaking. And and to be honest, that movie... Didn't I, th I think that movie had a lot of... Disney uh, influence. Oh, no, I'm thinking of Planes. I'm John Lasseter was in love with really Cars. Sad. Good. That's like, like his him. idea and everything. Yeah. No, I mean, from – I'll put it this way. Cars 2, the reason I, I defend it the way I do is, A, I enjoy pissing you off. But, B, <laughs> it – when I saw it in theaters, I saw it with a group of uh, my racing buddies. And, you know, this one had a lot less to do with racing than the first one did, which the first one didn't – you know, it wasn't focused around racing as much as it was about character growth and whatever. Um but we, I mean, we were, 
laughing out loud at this movie. We were having a good time. I think you have to see it with the right people. And that doesn't necessarily make it a good movie. But it, you know, like the group I saw it with, we walked out of the theater going this, you know, that was great. That was fun. Um, it's a fun movie. It's it's not it's not your your emotionally moving, um, you know. Oh my gosh, the feels type of movie. It's just a a movie that is just ah oh, they they. It's I don't feel the lack of effort though. I don't feel like that was a movie that like <laughs> they made it to make money. Yes, but Paleo just says the cars movie is only for cars people, which is why normal people don't get it. <laughs> normal people, <laughs> and Paleo. <laughs> No, it, hey, <laughs> get a car. Then maybe we can talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, the the because uh, <laughs> like I, I love like Toy Story, Monsters Inc. And, and some of these universes are just so like Monsters Inc. is a really weird universe. I mean, screams that power cities. Okay, mm -hmm. that's bizarre, but oh, I'll take it. Fine, that's that's uh, I'll, let's run with it because they at least try to make it work. For Cars too, it's like. Uh, Secret agents. There's a world of cars. I mean, it's just... <laughs> Paleo just said it's only for people who want to have relationships. <laughs> exhaust, uh -huh. exhaust pipe. Well, I suppose like so. That's the main, I guess, argument for the video because like I, I try to tackle the positives and negatives, uh, just in a way where the people who say it is dying, which it, it isn't, Pixar is still doing fine, but things like Brave. Uh, Cars 2, the line of a sequel is, some folks would say that it's indicative of, like, the, that Pixar's failing as a studio, which isn't true. They still make money, they still are doing fine. Yes, they're kind of going through a sequelitis phase, but they're still pumping out new ideas. Two came out the same year, one was very successful, the other one not so much. And, yeah. and, and, and studios will have their ups and downs. Look at old Disney. I mean, before the Disney Renaissance, they were trying all kinds of things that were failing and then they finally struck gold and they're doing that again right now where from a creator point of view i don't think it's like oh this is a masterpiece but they are at least making new things that people enjoy tangled frozen and other movies that are kind of reinvigorating the princess genre for them you know i i think it's really important to also realize because nowadays the biggest focus on a movie's success is how did it do in the box office? Where you can look back to movies nowadays that that we look at like, oh my god, this movie is iconic. And, and one that comes to mind, I, I saw this just last week, was, um, to throw an example out, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, you know, with uh, Gene Wilder. That movie sucked at the box office and yet it's a classic it is and absolutely so is. I, and there it, are other like, just... like fantasia didn't do well in the box office but people who yeah. are into animation because i mean i feel like the average movie goer even to this day doesn't really care for fantasia but to people who love art and animation and movies you can't deny that fantasia was like an incredible film that still holds up to this day on what it accomplished. The second Fantasia is on the list of movies that have made me cry. Which scene made which you cry? Which is a very short. Uh, the whales, the fucking whales, when they jump out of the clouds and shit, and the music at the very at the like, very end. Yeah, I'm just like, damn. It's and amazing. Like, a little tear goes down my cheek. No, I'm with you. Oh, it's so beautiful. Like, when you combine music, like, there's something about music where in our brains, like, I, I was resonant about this, where, like, it's the buildup of music, and once it finally happens and, like, releases, like, your your brain actually releases a chemical that makes you have, like, goosebumps, like, it's some kind oh! of endorphins, and uh, th that's why, like, when you listen to music over and over and over again, like, you know that there's a buildup to it, and when it happens, you're like, oh, there it is, you know, I, I've been waiting for this part mm -hmm. of the song. It yeah. sounds like you're describing something else. I am. It's called oh, sex. Sexy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, no, yeah. The uh, it's that's that's the thing is that it's surprising sometimes when you realize what movies have done poorly, 
at a box office, which nowadays we look at and go, how did this movie do bad in the box office? Some movies don't really hit off until they reach the VHS stage. So we'll see when this goes out on VHS. VHS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, we'll see. Because I personally think that Disney's on the precipice of going into another renaissance where, like, in the sense that they're making content that people are enjoying. Like, it's not, I mean, Little Mermaid is great. Uh, Beauty and the Beast, fantastic. Uh, so we see things like Tangled, Frozen, and I know that there's a Hawaiian movie coming up here soon. Moana. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and that, oh, it looks so nice. It does. And I think I, I give Disney credit for, because for a while I know that they were trying to break away from Pixar and do their own thing when they were failing at it. I think Tangled is what gave them a breath of life saying, okay, we just take the exact same formula for our princess movies <laughs> that we had before and make it into CGI or computer animated and, and we're good. And it works. And then the next movie, oh, what if we had two princesses? <gasps> Write that down. Out. Put the passion on the paper. <laughs> and then now it's everywhere. Oh, frozen. And I mean, I'm I'm okay with it. Like, it's amazing though, because like, from a psychological point of view, it it sells. Like, all you gotta do is slap Frozen on anything. God, and there's it, like Olaf humidifiers, and they look terrifying. And I'm just like, why do you need a Olaf humidifier? Because Sarah, uh, for the people who are buying a humidifier, it's either buy the one that does not have Olaf and is generic, versus the one who has Olaf, and the kids are want to be like, yeah, get that one. Yeah, exactly. Sarah. The kids just cower in their beds all night because Olaf's like watching them sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Olaf the tormentor. Olaf, stop. Olaf, stop. And people, like, I know that there are some folks who say, like, they won't make a Frozen 2 because Disney doesn't make theatrical sequels. They already confirmed that they're doing a Frozen of 2. Of course they're going to make a Frozen 2. Oh, man. We made so much money. Well, that's that then. <laughs> of course they're making one. Like, one They've of made my, a sequel to Planes. One of my guesses for the Frozen 2 movie is that somewhere along the line, there's going to be a female snow person. <laughs> And she's uh, gonna have snow boobies. Nice. nice. Snow boobies. We're predicting snow boobies. I think they should have a female villain. With snow boobies. Nice. With snow with Yeah, you know, like boobies. how Elsa was supposed to be kind of like the anti hero. Yeah. But then they scrapped that idea and they turned it into this. I really would have liked to see the anti hero Elsa. I saw some uh like... And snow boobies. Story. <laughs> I saw some storyboard images of, of like her raising an army of evil snowmen, and uh, mm -hmm. apparently it was the song "Let It Go" that changed the creators' minds. Where they're like, you know what? Now let's let's have her be like a redemption story. Yeah. They should have just let her move and then just been like, okay, <laughs> she's gone. <laughs> All right, so it's ten one. We got, I'd say, thirty <laughs> minutes left. It's well, ten geez. one, and ladies and gentlemen. Can I tell my Frito story? Yeah, it's gonna be quick. Oh okay. yeah, let's hear it. <laughs> yeah, go. All right, so one day in middle school, little me asked my friend to buy me Fritos, and she comes back to the table, and it's the like the barbecue, whatever the heck, Fritos. And so I open it and I I'm eating it and like all in the middle of like eating this bag of Fritos, I decided to look in the on the ingredients in the back. And this was like maybe two or three years after I was diagnosed with celiac disease. And for anybody who doesn't know, I can't eat wheat gluten or anything like that. And so I look on the back of the bag and it says wheat on like the very first list of the ingredients. And I like and I was just like frozen in fear for like a minute. I was like Oh no. <laughs> and I remember like going to the nurse's office and like crying and I had to call my mom and I was like, Mom, I accidentally ate gluten and my mom's like, It's okay, you're not gonna die or anything. <laughs> just, uh... as, she, as she's looking up some uh, cheap funeral homes, <laughs> like okay. <laughs> Yeah, and I was just like, oh, no. And then my friend who gave me the Fritos, like, she started getting upset. I'm like, no, it's okay. You didn't know. <laughs> but yeah. Who was this? What friend? It was Brittany. Oh, Brittany. <laughs> Brittany. But yeah. 
a little celiac me was all scared because I yeah. ate gluten. And I was like, oh no. Oh, I have a I funny story. Uh, and, and while we tell this, uh, or I should say before I tell this, uh, Saber, is now a good time to have people start submitting their questions? Yes. Uh, so there's two things I want. So as oh. I said, I am going to try and make new videos on my channel where I address topics like, you know, are fandoms bad, like I did before, or is Picture dying, or <coughs> is nostalgia bad for entertainment? So if you have an idea for a video that you would want me to address, like that has something to do with animation or entertainment, you know, please... Tweet, tweet, tweet me it, and I will mention you in the video and credit you for the idea. Because I'm right now, I'm just trying to write down as much as I can just for future uh, videos. Because I want to do two per month, and then as well, please send us your questions. Uh, hashtag SPP or wait, hashtag SP podcast. There we go. Yeah. Use it. Use that hashtag with the question. That way, everybody else can see it, and we will answer your questions here on the air. So, <laughs> uh, as you all were saying. All right, so Sarah and I went on a, a cruise to Hawaii. Um, I actually put out the whole vlog um, about this Hawaiian cruise in case you're interested. It's up on my channel. Uh, and this Hawaii cruise, <laughs> it, uh, it lacked something for Sarah. What was that? It had gluten-free desserts, but they weren't dairy-free. And it also yes. had desserts in the dining room. Yeah, wait. The desserts in the dining room were just sherbet. What? You, just sherbet, Sarah? Just is is that all it is to you? Is just sherbet? Sherbet. Just. Okay. Sherbert. So yeah, yeah. Uh, and Sarah was pretty much like, well, screw it. I am not just eating sherbet for two weeks. And <laughs> started just munching down just just plate after plate of no. as much gluten-free with dairy dessert that she could get. No, I, ate, I, ate, I, I was I, – I, uh, Plate I after plate. Keep it small. After plate. I mean she probably had – 10 pounds of chocolate cake one night. Oh, and I was I like, have wow. Wow. And so, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, Sarah, didn't you kind of, it, it hit you later. Yeah, it hit me later. And I completely regret because, like, I just, oh, it was awful. It was awful. It was awful. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it without being depressing because honestly, like eating that much dairy and stuff, like it just messes with your whole entire system. Like when you can't, you know, process it and it, it sent me into a depressive state and it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> so she's not going to do that again. No, I'm not. Um, I wanted to kind of hit on this too while Questions are coming in, Saber. Yes, the uh, the Bronies React uh, came out, so it uh, it's it's out. The bonus is out. Equestria Girls. I mentioned on my Twitter post that there'd be some uh, Bronies React stories, um, and it's it's funny because I saw, yeah, you, know, you typically see some people ask certain things. Uh, one question I got from people, they were like, "What happened to Noah in the bonus?" Um, and I asked, I asked Jesse, I'm like, so did you have questions for this? And typically she does have like, an not questions, answers. Uh, and typically she does. And she was like, I do not have anything interesting <laughs> for, for this. So she didn't actually end up submitting anything. Um, another thing that I've had some people inquire about are the, uh, they're like, why did you only, sh only show so much of Jesse? Why did you only show so much of Brony Dance Party? And uh, I guess the easy answer for this is that typically, or I should say, everyone submits different amount of footage. That didn't, that sentence didn't make sense. Everyone submits different amounts, there we go, of footage. And uh, I pretty much used, I think, everything I got from Jesse and uh, Bernie Dance Party. So, yeah, just some of the questions I got. But like I said, this uh, this React, it, it took longer to edit than usual. I don't know 
why it, it could have been the three hours of Left 4 Dead we've been playing each night. Maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know. But <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I, it's it's not my job to to figure out my timing issues. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm I'm happy with how it came out. I I got some good laughs out of you know going through everyone's footage and. Um, <laughs> yeah. I have been phoning it in with my reacts as of late. I admit, and this next one, which will I mean, I'll, well, is it is it a surprise now to say that you'll be doing a British Rex the finale? It's I I'm pretty sure. No, I'm pretty sure he announced it in one of the last. Yeah, it's... Yeah, no, oh, I, I mean, well, yeah, it's happening, if, whether or not. <laughs> yeah, we, we we are going to be doing a Season 5 finale react. When it comes out is to be determined. Um, I don't yet have footage, so I can't edit anything, guys, because I don't have footage. Well, I'm going to go all out for that one. And I've said that before, but I really mean it this time. Cause awesome. I don't think we're going to have another one for a while after that. So, got to make this one count. Yep. So, uh, <clears throat> want to go ahead and start tackling questions here? Mm, I'm going to go to the doctor. <laughs> yeah, you, that cough's been hanging out for a while. It's yeah. been a little bit, uh, Keep it's trying. overstated. Go to the doctor. Stop it. Like, oh, you're embarrassing me in front of my friends. Stop it. Uh, all right, yeah, questions. I'm scrolling through. Do you have one already? Uh, let me scroll here to where they begin. So cool. I just love that video by Shy Pro. Isn't it so awesome? Funny. Uh, I make sure it. there aren't any early questions I'm missing. Uh, here's one. A uh, question from Cadet Redshirt asking, what do you guys want for Christmas? This will help. Well, shout out I'm... to Cadet. She's one of my patrons, and she is a huge supporter, and she's awesome. So uh, what do I want for Christmas? Cheers. I want my family to be chilled out and actually have fun hanging out with each other. That would be a good Christmas gift. <laughs> <laughs> so superficial. Um, I, <laughs> I, uh, there. Okay, so this is gonna sound funny, and and it's not necessarily something that like I I need to get. It's it's just something that I saw, and I'm like, I want that. Like, I actually want that. Does anyone? I'm sure you guys do know. A <laughs> there's a Sega Genesis. All right. I, it was the first game console I ever purchased, and I have it still. And, you know, I play Sonic on it and all these old games. Um, at Sarah's Ralph's, they're selling a Sega Genesis with, like, 100, and, 100 games or something. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I, want, I want the games. <laughs> I want them. <laughs> and and I, I might end up buying it for myself as a Christmas present to myself. But, uh, yeah, I was just like, wow. They have that. Um, yeah, it was just it was weird seeing a Sega Genesis at a store. I don't think I've seen that for about 10, 15 years. So, yeah, I was like, oh, I'm going to get it. Oh, I'm going to get it. Um, <laughs> yeah, Sarah, what do you want for Christmas? Get out me. Um, Well, I've got a couple of things on my wish list on Amazon that I would like. Um, I've had a lot of things on my wish list for like three years now, <laughs> but I added a couple of things. I would like, I want to see the show, the Over the Garden Wall, and I have that on my wish list. There's a DVD for it. I've been wanting to see it. Wait, yeah. you've you've never seen Over the Garden Wall? No. Oh, I'm Sarah, so you'd love it. it. I know. You'd I know love, I would it. love it. That's why I want to see it so bad. So yeah, that's that's one of the things that's been on my wish list for a little while now. So hopefully someone gets it for me for Christmas. If only you knew someone who loved you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next question here is from Stubby. Stubby says, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? See, I'm trying okay. to find this post from Dean Notive where... Did we say that, a question like that before? I yeah, think that's the reason why so I'm, I'm asking this... Or maybe so... they give us like a, a list of... I think they give us things to choose from. I, I know. I, I actually told you guys this. Um, or I, I at least told Saber this. Uh, I, I was thinking the other day about like, what would be a, a really interesting 
superpower to have, and I'm like, oh my gosh, what if, what if you could actually, like, there's a lot of, I'm gonna suck on this word, anonymity, anonymity, anon, anon, anon. All right, don't hurt yourself, Kay. Get on. <laughs> that one. Um, Enemy spotted. <laughs> on, online, I I would love to have the ability to to find out who said certain comments online. Like I think it'd be really funny because I can imagine like what Tara a, Strong powerful... trash talking somebody, and you find out, and you're like, ha, ha, that's Tara Strong. I, don't know, I just thought it'd be funny. There's some <laughs> applications on computers that can help you with that. Yeah, but I want the superpower. I want to be able to just like <laughs> lean in through the the computer screen and yeah. look out the other side and be like, "Oh, yeah. it's you." I, 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 I got one for you. I got one for you. I think I would like to have telekinetic powers, like especially moving things with your like mind. Lazy. So yeah, so if like the remote's across the room, I wouldn't have to like get up to go get it. That's Sarah is using her superpower to not have to get up to get the remote. <laughs> uh, I am Nick Fury, and I'm here to talk to you about the, <laughs> the Avenger initiative. All right, so there's this post on Tumblr where you click on this link, and it rolls a superpower for you. So all right, I'm going to start off with, uh, with Ray's. Your superpower is going to be... <laughs> Bottomless pit creation. <laughs> what, what is this? It sounds like it could be good. The users of this power can create a hole or pit that doesn't have a bottom or end, which can cause their target to continue to fall forever without end. That sounds terrifying. I don't want that one. I can accidentally <laughs> like, wake up and your, freak out. <laughs> that's oh, your power. That's your power. Oh, that's like that's my fear. <laughs> All right, Sarah, your power is... I don't want it. Transcendent Angel Physiology. Hey, that sounds like me. Power to be an angel with enormous godlike power. Variation yeah. of Transcendent Physiology. Uh, capabilities. The user of this ability is angelic bending of godlike power that can uh, easily overpower any force in existence. This is fucking not fair. Yeah, but, you can't you can't make a damn hole. But in still, the ground, Sarah. second to the supreme creator, I guess implying God. The user's power, however, is still to be considered utterly fearsome, as it's that which no angel or any other being could ever hope to overcome. This is so overpowered. I got the short end of the stick. All right, my my, my, my turn. Mine took like, Mine took like a sentence to explain. It's just a bottomless pit. My power is shadow breath. The power Ew. to breathe shadow from the mouth. <laughs> Why would you need that? Why would you need a shadow breath? Is that a superpower? That's a, that's a disease. <laughs> the users of this power can breathe shadow from within oneself in any way, shape, or form. The size of the shadow, the destructive force. The shadows are destructive. The concerned <laughs> like focus of the shadow. Oh, you're right. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Dr. Facil Facilitator, or whatever. Facilier. There you From go. Princess Fac Facilitator. Facilitator. <laughs> Dr. Facilities. All right, let's, let's do a few more. All right, so, uh, Paleo's power would be... <laughs> Aw, not fair. Suit up. The power to dress in non-conventional way. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> users can dress themselves or other others into existing clothing, clothing, or clothing armor with ways that aren't conventional. For example, having the clothing armor move independently, teleporting right on them. So uh, there's a there's a picture here of like Iron Man putting on his outfit. So yeah. that's interesting. It's not a superpower. That's just a okay. just... okay. All right, who else is there? All right, how about for uh... like a fashion designer's like superpower? Wow. <laughs> All right, wow. so the next power, then let's do one for uh, Final Jeff. How about that? Okay. <laughs> Final Jeff's power is <laughs> sacrificial creation. <laughs> <laughs> through this sounds about right. <laughs> through sacrificing a piece of oneself, like blood, flesh, or even their own life, the user can create new or existing life forms. Mm. This is bizarre. All right, let's do let's do two more. Okay, Here, have, have some toenails. Me. All right, M. A. Larson, his yes. superpower is going to be ooh selective elimination. 
the user is able to erase the existence of certain objects or concept for a certain target of interest, making the target inaccessible to said concepts, but anything else can still still can as if nothing happened. What the fuck is this? This sounds like one major <laughs> plot hole, and this does sound accurate. Yeah, put it more simply, the target is analogous to being hell banned. What? <laughs> it's not simple at all. <laughs> okay, so we can edit. All right, and then one more. Let's do one for who? Who should we do one for? Black uh, Griffin. Uh, Black Griffin. We'll, we'll do both. Oh, so this, this, this one's for Matt. Poison transmutation. Huh. The user can transform matter and objects, including living beings, into toxins and poisons. That's oh. sounds awful. And then for Black Griffin, his power is going to be. Destruction embodiment. <laughs> Users become a physical manifestation or personification of destruction and gain the ability to bring destruction wherever they go. Everything breaks, cracks, crushed, disintegrates, explodes, or implodes into nothingness and oblivion. And all this can be acquired for the simple fee of $100. Is that what it says? No. <laughs> oh, okay. I was going to say. Um, well, I, I can make holes... I can do shadow breath. Sarah, just roll a 10. I'm OP. Sarah, all, <laughs> all of us can be put against Sarah and we'd all fail. <laughs> well, yeah, let's see you beat my hole. <laughs> like, like, man, I mean, the, the, the sad part is I'm thinking of how I could get creative with the superpower and I'm already like, I, I could live with this. I can see like a black hole like engulfing our, our solar system and you create a hole to suck in the black hole. <laughs> Take that, idiot. Well, now we, we've got a bigger problem. No, um, Whoops. All right, let's get, all right th that was quite the rabbit trail. So let's go on to the next questions here. <laughs> Alright, um... I see one from uh, Christmas Travis. Oh, no, 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 that's not related to the podcast here. I got one from Shifro. Do it. He says, what if in the movie Cars, Cars replaced humans and humans replaced Cars? Ew, so humans are like, running on all fours, like... <laughs> yeah, and the cars are driving the humans? <laughs> that's disgusting. Like, the little sk like the rib cage opens up. Oh. <laughs> I'm just checking the oil. <laughs> Where does the dipstick go? <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, I got one from Ozzy All. Uh, shout out to Ozzy. Uh, he says, "What Pixar original film that you like that not includes sequels?" So I guess our favorite Pixar film original, like standalone. Yes. Um. Ooh. Yo, I think Ratatouille is a fantastic film. I, I always change my answer whenever I'm asked this. Uh, I think I know what Sarah's gonna say. Yeah, do you? Yeah. I think so. And let me. I always gotta look at the list because I don't want to miss anything. Oh, by the way, for those who want to play this rolling game with the superpowers, there you go. I'm gonna. You know what? Just just for the hell of it, I am gonna say Cars because but we it has a sequel. It. No, I thought he was saying. Or, a standalone or film which doesn't have any sequel. So like like it's like Wally, Ratatouille. Uh, I thought he was saying like Cars, but oh. not Cars Two. <laughs> well, you can see The Incredibles for now. <laughs> that doesn't have a sequel yet. <laughs> and there's only a few movies do now that, that would, uh, apply since like there's some that are getting sequels ne in the next couple of years. Uh, well, well, damn. I'm gonna say Wally then. <laughs> I uh, I clicked the power thing one more time, and here's mm -hmm. the power that came out: tickling inducement. That's <laughs> Jeffrey's power. Users able to induce tickling, <laughs> a sensation that causes involuntary twitching movements and/or laughter. Wow. Sorry, this is my power. Mm-hmm. That's your power. Yeah. The power yeah, of the rest. I think I'd have to say Wally too. Oh, well, in that case, I, love, I really love Ratatouille, um, but I really, really, really love Wally. All right, another question here from Alec Greer. Shout out to Alec. He said, what would you do if Donald Trump showed up <laughs> at your doorstep? I'd ask I'd close the door and lock it. I'd, I'd be like, Donald, <laughs> you're funny. I'd take and, then I'd, and then I'd ask for some money. I'd be like, you got some cash? Just ask him for a small loan of a million dollars. 
I, I'm not going to ask for a loan. I'm just going to be like, can you spare some change? And he'll be like, oh, yeah, I have this $100 bill that I just can't get rid of. See, Take, I, I, I would, I would, what I would do is I would dress up as a Chinese soldier from like ancient China. And I'd say like, I come from a time portal. Donald, we need your help to stop the Mongolians. <laughs> and he'd jump into the portal with me. The end. All right. I got one. That's, a, that's good. That's really Thank good. You. Thank you. Uh, Alec Greer says, all of you are trapped on the island together. <laughs> Who would you eat first? Are we talking about literal eating or? Yeah. I don't think I would eat anyone. <laughs> I wouldn't eat anybody. No, nah, I couldn't do it. I'd rather die. Yeah. Well, then I'll eat both of them. <laughs> oh <my> God, <laughs> you're dipping us in hot sauce and blue cheese. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, this sauce is wild. <laughs> like, there's, there's got to be fish. You just gotta it's an island, that. Sarah. There are no fish. Duh. Stupid uh, me. It's not like there's birds or any other wildlife anywhere. <laughs> Drummer Shy is asked. Wait. What does he say? He says, I'm going to see Star Wars on Friday and I'm scared. What do I need to protect myself? Uh, uh, you know what's funny is uh, I was at the movie theater yesterday, actually. I saw. Um, God, it, the, I keep screwing up. I called it Heart of the Ocean <laughs> and I realized that's Titanic. Um, it's like in the heart of the sea or whatever that movie is. I'm sure Paleo's corrected it's me already. It's the Moby Dick movie. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was actually really good. I, I loved the soundtrack on it too. Um, it was very Hans Zimmerish, but it wasn't Hans Zimmer. It's some guy I've never heard of. And I'm like, ah, new, new feet in the game. Um, so for anyone that might be interested, I, I would recommend that movie. Um, but what was funny is that they had a sign out front that said, no lightsabers allowed. Yeah. Well, that's, I think that's going to be a really that goes across the nation because, like, the last thing I want to see tomorrow is a bunch of little kids, or adults for that matter, having lightsabers, you know, wah, 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 you know, and <laughs> yeah, I will, like, because, like, people are going to be excited, you know, and I understand yeah. that. But please, like, don't be a freaking, like, jerk in the theater. Like, be quiet, watch the yeah. movie. It's kind of like when people on Disney rides like use Flash and all that stuff. Oh, I'm I'm always, I'm always just. <laughs> I, <laughs> that's when I get racist against white people. I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, um, <laughs> so it, it it cracked me up though because at first when I I read it, I thought it actually. So you make a lot better point. I thought they were just basically saying nothing. That could be interpreted to be a weapon. I thought that's what it was for, but the the light up sounds a lot more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like like if some of them make sounds and stuff, it'd be really <laughs> obnoxious. I got one from Lightning Flame who says, "Have you all seen John Tron's new episode yet?" I have. Pale Paleo says it's because of weapons. By the way, oh, so good. That can, that can be their excuse. It keeps the other obnoxious stuff at bay. Yeah, you're just like, I'm good with whatever. Uh, what was the question there? Have we seen John Tron's new episode? I oh, haven't I really have, kept up I with John Tron lately. No, I, I just, I already saw a picture on Twitter which told me that this thing existed, which told me <laughs> what happens in it, which told me, okay. Some people are very, uh, I don't, I'm not worried about finding anything out about that, but it is hilarious to me about like, how some people just cannot keep spoilers in their pants. I'm like, come on, guys. When, when specifically when it comes to, like the Star Wars movie, like I've never seen more people beg to not have people post spoilers, and already I've seen spoilers, and I'm like, of course, really? the, it's it's the you know uh, what's, it, what's it called Barbara the... Streisand effect. There you go. Yeah. She had a wedding, and she said, "Don't don't poke me with a stick," and then I poked her with a stick. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, that's it. Um, all right, so next question here. Oh, minimize here. Is, Daniel has an interesting question. He says, uh, he says, what is your favorite quote of all time? <sighs> I guess... Hmm. I like that one that... Uh, what is it? Uh, there's a quote, and Sarah's going to know what I'm talking about. But the quote is, even a broken clock... <laughs> is right 
at least two times two or three a day. Times. Two, or three, two times. or three times a day, yeah. <laughs> and I, I thought that was like a really interesting quote. I'm like, ah, that's cool. See, uh, th nothing comes to mind, but if I was given some time to research, I'd probably find something. It uh, was that, that quote that I just said was from Goofy in Twice a. What is it? Mickey's Twice Christmas. Upon a Christmas. I like. No, it's Once Upon a Christmas. <sighs> Fine. And like he's like, as like a bit of context, he he asked Matt like, "Have I ever steered you wrong?" And Max is kind of gives him a look. He's like, "Well, even a broken clock is two, right two or three times a day." And Max this is time a I know punk. I'm right. <laughs> Max is a little punk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little punk. That seems to be the major plot point in all of the things where Max and Goofy are together. Is Max is a little shit to his dad. <laughs> And then regrets it because he knows his dad loves him. I'm like, how many times do you need to learn this? How many times do you need to just stop being so selfish <laughs> and self-absorbed? Enough mm -hmm. is enough is enough. I can't go on. I can't go on. What's the next question? All right. I've got one from the Brandy Crafter saying, what's your least favorite cartoon? Mm. Oh, that's... Uh, <laughs> that's an easy one. Cartoon? Yeah. Wait, did you say that is an easy one? It's not. <clears throat> oh yeah, no, because I don't focus on like if I don't like something, it it doesn't hold my attention for very long. Wander over yonder. Get... Yeah. Shut I'll, I'll... up. <laughs> Shut up. I'm gonna say One Punch Man. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. Like I only watch shows that I like. When I was a kid, and currently, uh, I've seen like a lot of stuff about that Johnny Test show <laughs> on Tumblr. Yeah. On, like the sound effects and stuff. The whips. Um, but I don't know. Like I haven't really watched it or anything. Uh, I I guess I'll have to go with Generation Three Point Five of Ponies. Oh yeah, that's a good one that's actually. Really good. <laughs> um, let's see. Shifro asks, "Can you give me a request for Photoshop? I'm out of idea juice." Like a request for what to draw? Photoshop. Well, you can do a lot with Photoshop. I you see. Can... I don't. I don't know this. Shifro is the master of overlaying people's faces. Oh, is he? The... Is he the 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 the, the, <laughs> the Vladimir Pony yeah. dude? Minecraft Maker. Oh, okay. Mm hmm Oh, God. Ideas. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully we've inspired something in the last 24 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, that's an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> I got uh, one from Nathan saying, what's the best and worst Pixar movie? <laughs> Great. Now well, I know everyone's going to go with it. The, the, I would say the least, my least favorite Pixar movie That's would be Cars Two. <laughs> Why is it your least favorite? Same. Well, I'm curious to see, see what yours is. My favorite is Cars Two. What's your least favorite? <laughs> Okay, it's not Cars Two is not my my favorite. No, I will say in the mold. That's the problem that Cars Two has. Is it's like, it's like, the redheaded stepchild of the bunch. Because it was bad. <laughs> it's it's not that it's bad it's just that it, it's like just up against the Pixar movies and everyone's like oh you were you were fantastic but not as fantastic as the others and I'm mm -hmm. like oh poor, poor Bobby <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say the, the worst was the uh, volcano short that came up <laughs> before Inside Out <laughs> Yeah, because it was just really weird, like yeah. like the volcanoes wanted to do each other, and she made the guy <laughs> volcano explode. <laughs> they 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 start doing it, and you just see like this poor island nearby of people getting like sm like just washed up in a tsunami because of it. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, no! Which could be also a double meaning. Um, <laughs> Daniel Muno says. What was the first video game you've ever played? Um, you know, I think it was either Aladdin or The Lion King on the Super NES. Wait a minute. 
Oh, and uh, Bob, I just want right. to let, let Bobby one know real quick. He because he asked whatever happened to the video thing. We're still we're gonna show it here uh, when we wrap up the questions. Um, the first video game. That's a good question. That's a really good question. For me, it was, I think it was Sonic the Hedgehog. On the Genesis, the, like one of the first ones. Oh, good man. Or good man. I remember playing. Uh, no, that's like the first game I remember playing, like having memory of. So yeah, that was it. Okay, so I'm going PC here. <laughs> not not politically correct, but um, I remember <coughs> the first game I can remember playing was this dinosaur game, and it was like Dinosaur Adventure 3D or something. <laughs> and and it was a 3D game when that was the craze back on Windows 95. And I just remember, like, it wasn't so much a game game. Like, if I went console, it would be the Sega Genesis. And I'm trying to remember what game I first ever played on that thing. I, I know I got, like, Mario and Dreddy Racing, and it was the greatest thing ever. And now I can't even understand where the car is. Graphics, man, they've destroyed all the classics. <laughs> You know what's interesting is that Undertale won that game of the year or game of all time thing on Game Facts. I don't know how I feel about that. Well, they do it every year, so it's not even like <laughs> best game so, of all like, time. 2016. Wasn't it just... Ocarina of Time that's won for the past like 17 years in a row? I well, that was the one that went up against Undertale and lost. Yeah. You know what's funny is Paleo is like, if there's gonna be a game that defeats Undertale, it's gonna be Ocarina of Time, and yeah. Undertale was like, yeah, bring it on. Yeah, this was. I feel like this is the year for Undertale to shine. I'm, Can I be honest? Don't. Uh, I want you to lie to me. Because, I, I mean, since they do it yearly, it's not even that, like, you know, whoa. <laughs> I don't know. If they here's, did it here, every, like, ten years, then maybe, yeah, like, whoa, Undertale one? Whoa. Really? Here's, here's, I, this is, I'll, I'll lay this out as Sarah knows this. I have not played Undertale. But I'm wondering if Undertale is a trend. Well, I mean, in the same way that Avatar did its thing and then burned out, but I feel like Undertale has a bit more staying power because, like, it left an impact on a lot of people. And, like, like some somebody made a good comment <coughs> that I agree with for Undertale because, like, I guess what bothers me about it winning is, like, there are games out there, from a technical point of view, are just so much more advanced. and And that's... But then again, Undertale doesn't have to be that way. It was a simple game. It had simple mechanics. It had a great story, great characters, and that's what made it so wonderful. And also the fact that I don't really play games anymore. I play casual games. So picking up Undertale and playing it, that was quite an experience. And I really enjoyed that. Well, that's casual. It happens every four years. <laughs> Let me see this thing. And it, uh, who runs the thing? Is it Fan Gamer or GamePack? Game facts? Game facts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Game facts. Cool. Check this out. Y'all can move to the next question. Nathan asks who would win in a race, Rainbow Dash or race in a race car? I'm not sure. I've uh, raced I've, Rainbow, I've Dash. Rainbow Dash. So let's see. I You could say the sentence, race, race, Rainbow Dash in a race car. Race, race, Rainbow Dash, and a Rainbow Dash rain car. Race, <laughs> rain car. Race, um, race. So I say we hit a few more questions up here, and then we can watch your video. How about that? Let's do it. Let's do a lightning round. You cool if I just read them off quickly? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, this one's from... Sorry, I, I, let me miss screen had a reset there. <laughs> I got one. Cadet Redshirt asking, what is the one food you don't like simply for the taste and texture? It is pickles. I love pickles. I hate them. Ah! Especially a whole pickle. That is like I love death. that. I love, I love how crisp it is. Just crunch. I love no. it. No. Yeah, there shouldn't be crunch. No. Ah. And then it's a ooh. It. Peanut it. spread for me. <laughs> okay, that that requires a story. So much for lightning round. It's I'll make it quick. My dad is he he has this phrase where it, it's pretty much the phrase is it's your favorite, 
and mm-hmm. he'll assume you're going to love something because he thinks you're going to love it. And so he'll be like, it's your favorite. It's peanut spread. And, and this is like the, this is like, I don't even know what to call it. It's, it is the abomination of peanut butter. And my dad got it at the 99 cent <laughs> store and he was all proud of it because it didn't have gluten. So he's like, here, Sarah, try some. You'll like it. It's, it's your peanut favorite. spread. It's your, it's your favorite. favorite. It's peanut spread. Did you even try it? Yes, I did. And I, it was so gross. I tried <laughs> it tried too. it. I tried it. Oh my God. It was so bad. Like it, it literally, I don't know how you can make peanuts like, taste that bad. It's boogers. I don't know. It was, it was so bad. And, and I laughed because I'm like, Sarah, it's your favorite. My dad told you so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. Oh, dad. <laughs> oh, God. Shifro on Twitter just <laughs> made Saber Spark. He just overlaid your face, Saber. Let me see. Oh, I'm handsome. Wow, that is that is a male body right there. Is that Black Griffin? So many screenshots of you, Jeffrey, on the damn feed. Of me? Yeah, like, update the feed. <laughs> oh, right. I, I got uh, hashtag I, uh, SPP podcast. All right, I got one for you guys. Let's do a lightning round then. So, uh, this is from Daniel saying, "Would you rather have chicken feet or lobster claws?" Oh, lobster wait, claws. <laughs> Would you rather have chicken feet or lobster claws? See, lobster this claws. is this is why I am glad we do Q and A's because these are the questions that we that we need to get. Like, as in, wait to eat or I'm going. I'm going. Like your body's like, being yeah. transformed. Okay, chicken feet, feet. <laughs> to eat. Yeah, uh, feet. all the chicken feet over the lobster claw thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, chicken feet. I, I like having fingers. Shafer <laughs> uh, says, "Have you ever had an embarrassing moment in front of class?" Yes, I have. I have had multiple moments. Um, I think one that comes to mind was when I was showing Battle of the Brony to my class, and I got to the part with the ponies talking about them in particular, which really had no significance with the subject of sociology at the time. It was more like just, you know, a character bio. And it was on the Applejack one where I was like, you know, Applejack is this and that and Applejack is that. And and I remember like look, looking at the video proudly on the screen and then looking at my class and they're like, what's this about? And I'm like, you know what? We'll skip to the part that actually has to do with sociology. <laughs> I have my reputation. <laughs> Oh hi, Bonnie. Um, the uh, I I had one in elementary school where we were doing this like presentation where all the parents come out and everyone's like dressed up as certain things. And I guess I just like didn't practice or bother memorizing my stuff, and I kept forgetting what it was. And and so when my part came up, somebody else knew what my lines were supposed to be, like the next person. And I'm like, and the uh. The uh, and the guy said something like, the "sandwich." And I'm like, "That's it, the sandwich." And you know, I was just trying to cover. It wasn't so much like embarrassing. It was at the time I was like, "Oh man, I kind of blew this." But what was funny is my teacher. I, I was like, you know, we went through this, and I'm like, "Oh man, I sucked during that." But I just tried to wing it and and make it as good as it could be. And the next day, the teacher was like, "You know, the one person who I think deserves a round of applause." was AC race best. <laughs> and then, and I'm like, what? And she's like, because you didn't give up even though you were stumbling and you, you just went with it. And I'm like, you're giving me credit for being the only one who screwed up. <laughs> and I was like, sweet. So I screwed up, but I also got props and everyone applauded me. And I realized I'm never going to memorize anything ever again. Hence now we do whose lines. <laughs> All right, got one from. Uh, uh, Stubby says, "What is your favorite book?" Uh, to Kill a Mockingbird. War and Peace. Oh, that's, a, that's a good easy read. Uh, for me, The Hobbit. It really is just a delightful book. And it's easy to read. And it's a lot of fun. Yeah. I have to think more on this one. I haven't read a book in a long time. <laughs> Not um, <laughs> Academy. No. Um, no, there was a... I liked the... I don't know. It, I don't know. I'd have to... Like I said, I'd have to go back. There's 
there's some books I really enjoyed, but they were. You know what? Are you my mother? That's a damn good read, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So okay, uh, I think that's it for questions. Thank you all for submitting all right. them. Now let's watch the video. How about that? All right. So Saber, I, I you got the link? Yes. Let me go ahead and move the top card and hey. monitor on, full screen it. What ride is this? Is this the? Uh, oh, it's Goofy's ride. Yeah, mm -hmm. Goofy's flight school. <laughs> I'm excited for this little Tommy. I love it. I'm excited. I've already seen so this I, video. I, I found out Tommy is uh, not the biggest fan of roller coasters. Really? <laughs> I can't wait. Let's watch this video. All right. Ready when you guys are. All right. Three, two, one, go. Is he for real? Oh, oh we're flying! Oh, what Where are they <laughs> flying from? Go! We're gonna have Brody on the house! Why do we go on this ride? We're gonna have a Brody! Why do we go on this ride? I'm crying! I'm crying so much! I couldn't do it. I, 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 I got like, you. I got... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is this captain for the rest of the ride? Or rest of it? Oh, wait. No. I fast forward. I'm sorry. California. It's fine. You can. I, I'm watching this part. Pacific Party Gun, San Diego, California. January 8th through the 10th, 2016. Show staff, Peter New, Andrew Lippman, Saber Spark, myself. We're not show staff, but we'll be there. We're not show staff. Well, there's a bunch of other fandom guests. It's going to be great. Lots of panels, who's line events. Joe Akeen, Eileen Monty, it's going to be crazy. You did good. You all right? <laughs> I'll never go on a roller coaster again. Does he really not like roller coasters? He loves them. He loves them? Yeah. He likes them. All right. Well, I think that is it for this episode of the Semi-Perfect Podcast. There is one last thing that <clears throat> me and Jeffrey wanted to talk about. and uh, uh, Should we also give away good. something? Oh, son of a gun. Oh, I yes. keep forgetting that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm awful. Uh, come back next week. <laughs> <laughs> and I will. All right. So what we're going to do, actually, just for the heck of it, so let me... And what the thing is, I've been looking around for the previous retweet. I think I've only did it once, actually. I I don't. I think you only did it once. Because there's the one I have this week, and the thing is, I can like, I can. Oh my god, there's 41 people who retweeted it. Uh, it's gonna take me an awkward like four or five minutes to write everybody's name up. Well, well, it then... sounds like it sounds like we uh we have stuff that we can still talk about. Uh, if you all want to go ahead and do that, I will randomize this and <laughs> you and Sari blocked it too. You all have been me or wait, did you reblock? I think or was it just I reblocked the first one and then I unretweeted it because well, well, what that... is it? Are we not good enough? No, because <laughs> I don't want to take it away from anybody else. No, I'll just say it doesn't matter. I'll just, I'll just redo it again. All right, you all talk. I'm gonna do, go ahead and take care of this. Okay. Keep forgetting, I'm awful at this stuff. <laughs> yeah, so, so we'll, we'll buy time. What? You want to set this up? The Pinocchio's Christmas? I'm trying to remember. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh my god! Uh, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who have stuck it out this whole this whole show. Oh, okay, so. This is Sarah where it turns a little PG 13. <laughs> yeah, this is where. Not, not what we've been saying. <laughs> anything else um 
<laughs> this guy named so, Joe Biden, by the way, who who retweeted this. <laughs> I did think the actual vice president is a viewer <laughs> of our show. <laughs> Just <laughs> casually watch the show. I don't consider myself a brony. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> so, so, um, Pinocchio's Christmas. Sarah could tell you I drive her crazy because I'll go through and just set all this crap to record, mm -hmm. and then I, I will I will get through it. Um, but uh, yeah, I just there's a lot of stuff that I need to watch to make sure it doesn't start deleting other things. And so I I recorded this thing called Pinocchio's Christmas because I'm like, what the hell's Pinocchio's Christmas? And it's a Rankin Bass short, you know, Christmas special, uh, where Pinocchio. It's pretty much the Pinocchio story, except Christmas. that he doesn't <laughs> turn into a real boy, does he? No. Good. Uh, at the end, it's like, oh, maybe he'll turn into a real boy someday. And like, yeah. It's oh, like yeah. A little it, montage it, of like all of his other adventures. It, it references pretty much the yeah. movie that we all know, yeah. Um, and yeah, and and so. In not a lot of voice actors and actresses in this, but Sarah, there was this voice actress for the cat, mm -hmm. and there's a cat and the fox that you know try to make Pinocchio do bad things, and and she couldn't find the name of the voice actress of the cat, yeah. but you did find something else. You did find something else. There is a Tiffany Blake who voiced a child in this yeah. movie. Yeah, she was the she was the girl puppet, right? I. The one who no. turns into, or no. she was just a child? She was just an extra child. Like, okay. <laughs> so I'm going through so. all the women's names on this movie because the cat wasn't credited as a voice. So I'm going through all the women's voices. Yeah, and, and let me, like let me say. Unfamiliar. Yeah, yeah. So she's going through. And we found out that some of these actors and actresses, specifically the one we're bringing up, had a fantastic acting career following Pinocchio's Christmas. <laughs> Sarah, do you have it up? Yes. Oh, they're in porn, weren't they? <laughs> so we're going to read off some of the uh, names, or, or Sarah's going to read off some of the names of the following movie credits that this person had following uh, Pinocchio's Christmas. Yes, okay, so 1980, it starts out with Pinocchio's Christmas. This is her first movie. Good. Good. Then, in 1985, The Fine Art of Cunnilingus. 1985 as well, Sperm Busters. There it is. Uh -huh. 1985, The Lust Bug. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's a Herbie, like... <laughs> 1985, Porno. The Adventures of Tracy Dick, The Case of the Missing Stiff. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, good. A good uh, Doctor Who crossover. Features with favorite my penis. pet, Tailhouse Rock. Third Tailhouse sex. Rock. <laughs> sex the Hard Way. <laughs> sex Shoot. Who comes up with these names? Indecent Itch. <laughs> that sounds like herpes. Twilight Indecent Moans. <laughs> Where oh, is she? <laughs> Let's see. The next one, Apple. Saturday Jack Night Fever. Oh, it's a good dancing movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's an animation about a beaver that always wanted to perform. Sensuous singles. Loose morals. It's a, loose morals. Yes. Breastography. <laughs> <laughs> Outrageous orgies too. Joanna. That one. Orgies and the last one, Detroit Dames. Well, yeah, that was a career ender for her. Yeah. You know, just I don't know. There was something that just didn't work with the directing in that one, and just her. You know, her I, took a dive I was wondering this today because like PewDiePie has like over forty million subscribers, and he's been seen by you know hundreds of millions of people. But I was thinking, is there a porn star out there who's even more popular? Who because like never underestimate the power of porn, where like. There are folks who probably have like over a billion views, maybe. Like you, you do know that they have porn conventions, right? Oh God, yes. They, they know they're really popular. Like I don't get that. Like I don't get people who. I hope they have whose lines at those porn conventions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
things you would say to your hooker, but not your dog. <laughs> <laughs> Come. Oh. <laughs> I borrowed that one from Colin Mockery. All right, but uh, what's weird to me is like you have people who are like who are like extraordinarily knowledgeable with porn, and it's kind of weird to me out. It's like, oh, that actress, that's Clarissa Larita, and it's like, mm. how do you know this? Like, you know every porn star apparently. That's like. Do you like sit there with a pipe and a cup of brandy and just watch porn? As in, like, like I it, enjoy it for the plot. It's it's an art <laughs> form that you don't understand. You don't understand. Or people who read like Playboy. It's like I read for the articles. It's like really you, you do. All right. Someone just suggested we rename this to semi perfect porn. <laughs> okay, <laughs> amateur. Um. All right. So I have the list here. I'm gonna randomize it. Oh, I'm excited! I'm excited! I retweeted it so I can win. Alright, I have the top two people here. Number one is Relaz, R-E-L-A-Z, and then number two is Joshua. So, I'll find you all. I feel like sure one to of those tweet their names. generic. What's that? Be sure to tweet their names. Yes, I am trying to find where they are. Hold on. I was secretly hoping that Vladimir Pony would win. <laughs> oh, he was he, in the running. Right? He's awesome. I love him. Where is it? I just want to say again a big thanks to Shifro. That that I had a massive smile watching that uh, that, that video. Cool. I we, love it. We it looks great. It, who, it looks great and everything. We appreciate folks who go out of their way to make stuff like that for us. We really really appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. So let me click on this. I'm watching it as the chat begins to tear up. I I found Realize, and then I have Joshua right here. I like his description. Sophisticated, cultured, handsome, suave. These things that do not describe me. <laughs> <laughs> all man. right, and then Realize it's a picture of like cats and a little baby dog. So, all right, we well, got you two. I need you all to, if you can, either email me or... Uh, tweet me your address, and I will send you a pony toy. And then uh, for next week, I think we'll do a pony plus or something. Ooh, in honor, in honor, in honor of Christmas. So, all right, that's it for the show, I suppose. Went on for about two hours, but we owe it to you all. I like how I like how we're like, yeah, this might be a shorter show. <laughs> <laughs> I know, isn't it funny? Yeah. yeah. Hey, it's good though. So, all right, guys, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you guys next week. I mean, I know it's close to Christmas, so we'll play it by ear. There might be a chance the episode might not happen, so just follow us on Twitter. We'll keep you updated, but I'd say more likely than not, we'll have a Christmas-themed episode, and Sweet. and we'll have some fun chatting before the holidays officially hit us. So, all right, Sweet. thank you, folks. See you all next week. Good night.